again. Thank you for joining us once more at the Hydrogen Fuel Cells Batteries Group Exhibit. Thanks for staying with us. And uh, please, as you know, help yourself to some drinks there on the house. Up next, I have uh, Jakob Krosgaard, uh, Senior Vice President at Nell Hydrogen Fueling. And his topic is Nell Hydrogen Station Release of Latest Hydrogen Station Technology Development. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. Hi thank you. Thank you. Okay, first of all, we'd like to please find out a little bit more about your company and what it does. Yes, so within uh, Nell Hydrogen, we uh, do electrolyzers, both for on-site electrolyzers for hydrogen stations, but also large-scale electrolyzers for, for centralized hydrogen production. We do hydrogen stations, uh, deliver them uh, together with the electrolyzers all over the world. Uh, and then we have our latest division, the Nell Hydrogen Solution division that I'm heading which is responsible for sales of hydrogen stations, but also combining hydrogen stations and electrolyzers into sustainable business cases for our customers. Because that's, uh, that's really the trend we are seeing. Starting last year and now moving on, uh, stop doing demonstration and start doing business. And that's what we see tendencies, especially in the United States, Asia, it's happening here in Europe as well now. Yes, we've seen that, that trend, a lot of uh, the talks at the moment, people just saying exactly that, just like, less talk and more do, and move forward. Um, can you, I saw in your booth that you have a, a unit there, can you tell us about your new uh, technology? Yeah, I'm uh, extremely excited about that. So we, we do our hydrogen stations, as uh, I'm sure most of you know, hydrogen stations consist of hydrogen compression, cooling, and the control to make the film. Uh, and now we have used uh, five, six years to develop our own uh, compressor technology. So we've built hydrogen stations since 2003, where we started. Our experience has been that the existing technologies have not been sufficiently uh, efficient, reliable, contamination-free, uh, having the variable speed and no uh, waste gas. So that has basically been the, uh, uh, the priorities that we have put into the development of our uh, technology. It's uh, based on, uh, on membranes or diaphragm technology, uh, but beside of that is fundamentally different from what is uh, ever seen in the world before. So it can run variable speed, has a high capacity, a very high efficiency. Um, we don't vent any gas. The, uh, the head you see on our booth right over behind you has been running 5,000 hours in laboratory, and that is uh, without any replacement of rare or spare parts. At 200 kilograms a day, that's actually four years. We don't promise that will happen in real life, but uh, now we are ready to uh, get the technology into the field. We will be offering it together with the existing compressor technologies that we, that we are using and have a very good partners for. Uh, but now it's ready, and we believe that this will help our customers make a sustainable business case, but both on the capex, but especially on the on the opex and the maintenance of uh, uh, of stations. How is it that uh, how is it different than other ones in the market at the moment, uh, or better even? So well, uh, of course we believe it's it's better on on all the parameters I talked about before. Uh, we also see it as the fundamental thing about hydrogen stations are that they have to be safe, make a, make a safe fill, and uh, don't contaminate the vehicles that you're filling, because otherwise we get into other issues. Uh, so that were the, the cornerstones of the development. And then secondly, we needed to make a, a platform from where we could grow. So what you see there is a, a 950 bar compressor head. We will have 500 bar compressor heads as well that can be configured in, uh, in different uh, configurations to fuel 70 MPA cars, buses, trucks, uh, and also 35 MPA bus, truck, trains. So in our pre-talks, we discussed how your uh, compressors are oval, not round, as, as it is the case in the market. Can you tell us why? Yeah. So uh, I think any, any uh, diaphragm compressors existing today have an, have an oval shape. And the oval shape is uh, the typical selection if you want to, uh, to uh, distribute the stresses in the best way possible. Uh, however, that also gives you limitations with uh, not having a good uh, fluid dynamic control inside, uh, inside the head. So we, we clearly needed to have that as a fundamental for our, uh, our compressor development. Uh, so it's, uh, it's oval shaped or elongated head, uh, which gives the same, the same features as you do with a round head, but it gives them more capacity. Uh, and it gives uh, much more reliable control of the uh, uh, fluid dynamics inside the head. 
whereas both on the gas side and on the hydraulic side. And as well, during our pre-talks, uh, you discussed that uh, Nell is first up many things. Uh, would you like to expand on that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we, we tend to think that we have been uh, taking and showing leadership on, on multiple of, uh, uh, of initiatives. Uh, the, the, our compressor release has been the latest one. Uh, last year, we introduced our hydrogen station factory uh, that is now in full operation in, in Denmark, where we can do 300 stations per year. Uh, that's not the run rate we add yet. We are significantly lower, uh, but everything is prepared. Uh, it's the lean production set up ready to, to scale it up. Um, and, and we think that will be needed to supply stations for right now. It's moving uh, fast in California, and it looks like the market is really taking off in Asia. Uh, Europe has been good. It's a little slowing down now, but I think it will catch up in the next few years again. Uh, do we have any questions at the moment? Not quite yet. Okay. Um, what uh, what challenges uh, do you, do you, uh, does Snell encounter either with your uh, technology or uh, or as a business? So with uh, with our hydrogen station business, I, I think that the, the the issues for us and for all of our customers are to to make the sustainable business case work. So we are now now right in the transition point of our industry, where we go beyond the demonstration and customers buying equipment just to make a marketing budget. Now they are actually trying to talk about a return on investment (IRR) and how can they do that with products that are getting mature, with vehicles that are getting mature. So our greatest issue, because we do believe that we have the solution ready on electrolyzer distribution and station side, but our greatest issue are to have uh, the vehicles ready at a sufficient quality, price, and quantity. Uh, and we especially see issues on cars. There are not enough cars. Uh, and Denmark, as an example, we were the first country in the world to have a country-wide network of, uh, of 10 hydro stations, and we only have a little more than 80 cars. It's a terrible business case operating those stations for our partners. So we really need more customers. And that's also why we're pushing on the, on the heavy duty. Uh, so buses, we are very, very happy with our uh, exclusive partnership with uh, uh, Nicola that do uh, hydrogen trucks. Uh, we'll start in the US, they have a very, very great potential and are extremely ambitious and so are we. And uh, so we talked about challenges, what about uh, opportunities? What opportunities do you see coming up? Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's uh, two sides of the same coin, being the opportunities are uh, creating uh, projects where you have uh, the heavy duty and a mixture of uh, light duty vehicles where you uh, lock into the, uh, the renewable energy. Uh, it's quite funny, when, when you look at the prices of electricity around the world, the places where it's cheapest are the places where it's greenest. And uh, we see that tendency is changing. Uh, it's getting better and better on, on, so based on solar and wind. Uh, and we see we can hit what we call fossil parity on, uh, on quite a few points. Both fossil parity, meaning uh, large scale, maybe 20 megawatt uh, electrolyzers and actually make hydrogen competitive with SMR, two to three uh, euro per kilogram. Uh, but also for the heavy duty vehicles, down to five euro per kilogram, uh, dispense that pump if you have large, large fleets. Um, I think that will be a transition and a changing point for our industry when customers start to buy hydrogen solutions, not just because they think it's great marketing, but they can see that it's truly a good business. So in speaking of that, uh, so what uh, business case can be made for this? So uh, the business case on, uh, on our hydro stations, um, when you uh, put the CapEx and OPEX together, you can make a return on investment uh, in less than 10 years if you have a utilization of 60 or 80 percent on your station, uh, which is fine. However, on all the car stations in Europe today, you have utilizations on one-digit percentages. Uh, so there's still a, still a long way to go. Do you get to expand more on that? Uh, I think it's the, it's the obvious choice. More vehicles. Getting, uh, getting vehicles that you drive more kilometers. So probably a few of you know that I'm an FCV driver myself. Uh, I'm uh, more than 100,000 kilometers in my Toyota Mirai, and me and my family, we love it. So I'm a heavy user. Most of uh, FCV drivers are not heavy users. They are public authorities of some kind, and they use it more for show than for actually driving. So we need heavy duty users like taxi fleets. Uh, Clara Shuttle is a very good example of uh, of innovative ways of using fuel cell vehicles and getting 
uh, more higher than uh, throughput. And the more higher than throughput you get, the better business case. Uh, what is uh, Nell's commitment uh, as far as your technology and as far as the business? What is, what is your commitment? So within Nell, we have a very clear uh, commitment to move our industry. We want to be uh, the leaders of the pack. We're willing to take risk. We're willing to, to run ahead and also sometimes stumble. Uh, it's okay to make failures as long as you learn from them. Uh, and I think we have a very, very strong uh, team based out of both Denmark, Norway and the United States uh, where we can grow this. And we have our, our presence in uh, most of the Asian markets now as well. And so just getting close to the uh, end of our talk, what, what would you like people to take away from this conversation that, that are like your top more important uh, points? So uh, I really think that uh, looking at higher than stations, uh, I really hope everybody considering making higher than stations, getting them installed, contact us. Um, if you're considering make a sustainable business case, so actually installing a station and considering how to make that an investment case, uh, you should definitely contact us as well. We have the, the models ready. We have the, the products in both the stations and the electrolyzers to do so. That's right. And I believe your booth is just B60, which is right over there. Right over there. Right at the corner there. And you can see the uh, compressor there. Uh, and uh, thanks again for joining us today, uh, Jakob Krosgaard, uh, Senior Vice President at Nell Hydrogen Fueling. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. So thanks again. Uh, we have uh, coming up uh, my colleague uh, is uh, bringing is coming up with uh, Joseph Bay, uh, expert manager at Aparam, and uh, the uh, topic is continuous coated stainless steel for bipolar plates on PEM. Thank you very much.